met a woman named Amy Ross about five years ago. And she'd actually gone through this training. Uh, she was actually uh, uh, she was a med student. She was going to medical school at Georgetown University. She needed a way to pay for it. She'd already been a pretty good, a pretty good NCAA collegiate runner uh, in college, I think at the University of Oregon. She'd been an 800 meter runner. But she thought, you know, maybe I could still compete for the 2000 Olympics in Sydney. She also wanted to go to med school. And so she started figuring out how to pay for it. She found that armed services would send people to medical school to become a doctor. They'd come out as a captain and serve on active duty as an army doctor, or as a, as a, a, a military doctor. But she found the army also had this program called the World Class Athlete Program, where they would actually train elite athletes for the Olympics. And so she, she tried out and made this program, but she still had a problem believing that she belonged at that level. She knew, I'm good, but I need a lot. Yes, but. I always hear the but, but I'm not good. Olympians are those people you see on TV. She didn't believe that she belonged at that at, at that level on that arena. And so a guy who actually, you know, who worked with me as at West Point was actually coaching her. And he got her to develop this affirmation, I am an Olympian. He had her write it down 15, 20 times a day. Every time she went through the door, that was a visual cue to her to, to tell herself, I am an Olympian. Fill yourself with those kind of statements. I am an Olympian. I am a top salesperson. Whatever. And you know what? She went out, she started competing, and she took a year off from med school, and she went out and started competing, and she started winning races. She qualified for the uh, for the US Olympic trials. And in the semifinal heat, guess what she did? She ran her best time she'd ever run in her life. She set her personal record and qualified for the finals. Two days later is the finals, and that determines who's going to Sydney on the U.S. Olympic team. She goes out and runs the 800 meters. Guess what she does? She sets another PR. She ran her best results, not once, but twice when it counted most. And she was telling me the story. I said, wow, how did it turn out? And she said, I was third at the top two when he was sitting there. <sighs> and, and again, that was the normal human reaction. Like, oh, man, aren't you disappointed? It's like, she said, no. She said, because... You know, she said, first of all, the Olympics are like a big iceberg. You miss the tip of, tip of it above the waterline. She said, I was above the waterline. I was on the national stage. She said, I was in the U.S. Olympic trials. I made it to the finals. And she said, I, you know, secondly, she said, I ran faster than I had ever run in my life. Not once, but twice the two most important races of my life. She said, how could I be disappointed in this? Yeah, right. And, and she was teaching me something at that point. I said, yeah, you're right. So I asked her, now what? And she said, well, I'm going back to med school. And my new affirmation is, I am an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> and guess what? I saw her in the spring of 2006, and she was back at West Point applying for a residency at the uh, sports medicine clinic at West Point. And she finished med school, and she was on her way to be an orthopedic surgeon. Wow. Sports, business, life, it's the same skills. And she was able to very quickly make that translation from athletics to her professional life. And I'm sure she's been a very successful orthopedic surgeon at this point. So that's the power of affirmations. So I want you to think about, I don't care how much time it is, but I want you to think about something you want. Maybe you can write this down on your pads of paper in front of you. Think about something you want to accomplish in the next year. What is something you'd like to do? And I'd like to focus on your professional lives. Is there something you want to do? Something you want to accomplish? Some sales goal you want to achieve? Or a promotion you want to achieve, or something like that. Think about it. And write it down using these five P's here. Personal, powerful, positive, present tense, and precise. This is for you. I mean, I'm not going to look I'm going to clock these up. This is for you. Write it down once. The first thing is devising it. Next, what I want you to do is commit yourself to writing this 15 to 20 times a day until it comes true. You will be amazed at what this does to your outlook on life. You'll be amazed at how it just invigorates you to go out and do things you've never done before. Maybe it could be a sales goal. I sell X amount in 2008. Whatever it is that you want to accomplish, something that's out there, but write it as if you already achieved it. Write it over and over and over again, each and every day. And you'd be surprised.
surprised what this does for you. Remember that picture I showed you when you run the marathon under 249? You know, I did it before the race. I want to run 245. I wrote it 119 times at one before the race. Went back later and counted it, but I've been doing it for weeks. I actually want to run 255, but I smashed that time by seven minutes or so, almost eight minutes. So, okay, so this does work. It's very powerful. Do this. If you do this, you'll be surprised at the effect of All right, so let's wrap this all up. Four key skills. Got some ones for your handouts. All right, Tony? Here's your handouts. Let's, you know, let's think about how we can accomplish these things. And upon the use of affirmations, I know it, or I sell X amount of dollars in the next the coming year. Focus your mind on things you want, and all the small victories you've accomplished up to this point. Now, you resolve, you alone, you and nobody else responsible for your own internal attitude. So we cultivate it every day using